To capture prey, it relies on muscle power, coiling around its victim and squeezing the breath out of it. And a large snake needs large prey. The biggest rodent in the world fits the role. A capybara, the size of a pig, is fairly easy to ambush as it bathes in the warm waters. The snake must have teeth strong enough to hold on to such lively prey and be ready to loop its body tightly around the capybara to avoid being bitten or scratched. The anaconda, the most powerful of constrictors, moves in. To be safe, the actor needed to know exactly how a large constrictor kills, just as Donald Stridham does. I caught the snake on somebody's farm. It had eaten something really large, and uh, the farmer was worried it's going to eat his dogs or even maybe his children, which isn't uh, totally unrealistic. Have a look at that. Yeah, it's getting me around the arm here. I can really feel it. You get this area here, I mean, you can see how it's stopping the blood supply there. And uh, this is my arm, so I mean, I can handle, I can, I can wrap it off me here. But can you imagine that around somebody's neck? Um, that, I mean, that's pretty, pretty tight over here. This movie that we watched, we've just seen it with this Jimmy, where it had wrapped around him. Um, it wasn't totally wrapped around his neck, not like the way this has got me around the arm here. With uh, Jimmy, I could literally see that he turned around to get this python around his body, and it wasn't a natural constricting pose. Whereas this snake has got me. I mean, look at that. My arm's going quite red there. You don't have to try and make a plan here. It's really got me. One thing I got right in the uh, movie was that uh, the python, like many other non-venomous snakes, are ambush, ambush animals. They will lie in ambush for their prey. It'll lie there, wait for the animal to come past, strike at it, bite it, and hook it with those hundred needle-sharp teeth. It then throws coils around this animal while it pulls the animal into the coils. It then asphyxiates the animal. Every time it breathes out, it tightens more and more, and the animal dies of suffocation. If one looks into the mouth of this python, you can see a little circular tube, and that is the extension of its epiglottis. And it's very useful for a snake to have this, because what happens is, when it swallows, that'll extend right out of the mouth, and so it can still breathe while it's got a full mouth of uh, antelope. I think uh, the snake uh, deserves to be released now, so not to stress it uh, too much, I'm gonna release it here in the bush. And this looks ideal here. And as soon as I let the head go, I'm so I can feel, I can feel the coils have immediately relaxed on me there. And the snake just wants to get away, straight into the bush there. Wow, look at that arm. This arm's gone really quite red there. What a relief to have that off. This is great. I love letting snakes go back into the bush. It's such a nice feeling. You can do something for them as well. It's a nice feeling for me and hopefully for the snake. Back in anaconda country, there's someone who's trying to do good things for them as well. Anacondas have killed and eaten people, but that fact does not deter Maria Munoz. At the ranch of El Cedral, the petite Maria is on the track of her favorite animal. She works with her assistant, Ramon. A snake longer than 10 feet always requires two people for safe handling. How many males do we have? It's the breeding season for anacondas, and Maria recognizes this group as small males. She hopes they will lead her to the much larger females somewhere nearby. The males are placed in bags to keep them out of the way. The female they find is 13 feet long. Maria uses a trick to calm it down. No, 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 no. She dips its head in the mud so it can't see. 
es very quiet. Y le vas a poner en la cabeza. For several years, Maria has been studying how anaconda populations here live and vary. The tail. I'd like to know if it's a new one or to have the mark. Let me see the quack. Good. It's a new female for us. That's mean there are more than 900 anacondas, green anaconda in this ranch. Before Maria began her work, no one knew how many anacondas could live here. Now, by taking blood samples for DNA, she is also getting some idea about how they are related. But of course she still needs to know how long these giants are. Her personal best is nearly 20 feet, about 10 feet short of the world anaconda record. Yeah. These are the heaviest snakes in the world. But this one is a little lighter than the 485-pound monster in the record books. 44.45 kilogram. Some snakes, like this South African tiger snake, not only constrict their prey, but are also venomous. I've got the tiger snake's favorite prey. It is a striped skink. Now I'm going to bring it in closer. And you're going to notice that the tiger snake will bite and poison its prey, also wrap around it to constrict and kill. Now this is of course a dead skink, so I'm going to move it around so that the snake thinks that it's alive. The tiger snake's venom is weak, so it needs to grip the lizard firmly not only to prevent escape, but to limit the risk of damage to itself during a struggle. Often the brilliant colors and patterns of a snake's skin are not a warning but a subtle camouflage matching its surroundings. And to us, it can look beautiful. Scales come in endless varieties of shape and structure. In the wild, snakes are not easily seen, a useful quality which suits these masters of ambush perfectly. But the beauty and subtlety of snakeskin has also been their undoing for thousands of years. As any snake grows, it must shed its outer skin like an overtight suit. The new scales revealed are at their best. The cast-off skin is discarded, and with it also go most of the parasites that have attached themselves to the snake. The regular shedding of dead skin has special significance for rattlesnakes. Each time a rattlesnake slips out of its old skin, its rattle gains another section at the base. The rattle is a series of loose-fitting interlocking scales that, when shaken, produce a sound that warns large animals not to step on the snake. Although only a warning, the rattle has been the snake's downfall. Their noise makes them easy to locate, and as a result, tens of thousands are killed every year. I hate rattlesnakes. J.P. Jones sees rattlesnakes only as potential killers of people and livestock. He's hunted them since he was a boy, but recently he's finding it harder to find them. He simply can't hear them even with the listening apparatus he designed himself. There are rattlers around, but many are becoming quieter. Ruthless hunting is exterminating the loudest, and a greater proportion of snakes with weak rattles are living and breeding. Not having a loud warning, of course, makes a snake even more dangerous. But JP is undaunted 
and his roundup goes on, presumably until only silent rattlesnakes survive in his part of Alabama. Getting rid of snakes anywhere is never the good idea it might seem. Farmers in Vietnam didn't value the many snakes that once lived in the paddy fields until they vanished. The snakes were trapped for food and the rice crop was attacked by rats. A third of the country's crops was devastated by the rodents. Only the return of natural predators, such as pythons, could save the farmers' livelihoods. The government's official snake repatriator is Dr. Nagoyan. He's bringing snakes to the village where he was born. And he knows how important it is that children, as well as the farmers, realize how essential these harmless snakes are to their future. Each python released can potentially eat about 100 rats a year. Dr. Nagoyan will release 20 among them females that could each have 20 to 80 baby pythons a year. In the battle against rats, each snake in a paddy field is worth far more than those that are sold to be eaten. The snakes in our world can be partners in our survival. We're learning more about them all the time. But there's always a new twist. Well, sometimes when the uh, snake shed, it's not a complete shed, and uh, we have to help it. And in this case, the uh, top scale wasn't quite off, and I think I can get it. So now he's all done. A snake with two heads. Something went wrong in the egg. Such creatures are not uncommon. Only one head can feed, but this ring-necked snake will survive happily. It's very interesting how attached people get or not get to their reptilian pets. Most people think that how can you get attached to a snake or a lizard as compared to a fluffy kitten or a cat or dog. But in a way you really do get attached to these animals, partly because you soon realize how individual they are and how the personalities differ. By and large, you do get very attached to your animals. I'm constantly surprised by snakes. They're fascinating animals. Just everything about them is so different to us. They smell using their tongues. They move without any legs. They're cold-blooded. They have no ears. And they're just so interesting. They're so different. and so much to learn about them. Most of us might prefer to leave snakes to the experts, but love them or hate them, they're an important part of our natural world. As we shed our fears and learn more about them, we might find they're not such bad neighbors after all. To learn more about what you've seen on this